for so many years. So many lambs were offered up. But none of the blood that was shed could ever feed that bitter cup. Till one spotless lamb in the form of man led his life on Calvary. It was the only blood that could ever set men free. was not just blood of another spotless land. This blood was precious blood and it washed my sins away. And with this blood he can heal your broken body and say your spirit free. Hallelujah. I'm so glad this precious blood flows from Calvary and it reaches to the highest mountain. not just blood of another spotless lamb 
this blood was precious blood and it washed my sins away and with this blood he can heal your broken body and set your spirit free and I am so glad this precious blood flows from Calvary and it reaches Worship you, Jehovah. Thank you, God, for the blood. We thank you. Bless you. Thank you, Jesus. We worship your majesty. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name Jehovah is your name Jehovah is your name Mighty warrior You are great in battle Jehovah
somebody somewhere does not have this privilege to raise their hands unto the Lord and worship him. Somebody somewhere does not have this opportunity to worship God, to praise the name of the Lord. Let's just lift our hands. Let's just worship the Lord once more time. Father, we give all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. You are worthy, oh God. You are mighty, oh God. Thank you for this privilege. Thank you for this opportunity that we can stand here raising our hands unto you just to lift up your holy name. Because you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. Lord, we thank you because you own our lives. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we glorify your holy name. Hallelujah. Somebody in China. Somebody in the Republic of China does not have this opportunity, does not have this privilege just to come before the Lord, just to worship Him, just to be opened up and know and realize and know that there is God. So today we are praying for the Republic, People's Republic of China. The word says in Romans chapter 1 verse 16 that I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to those that believe, first to the Jew and then to the Greeks. It means that this gospel is for all people groups, for all nations. We have the statistics that will come there. We'll find that we have about 545 people groups. But over 400 are unreached people groups. So we want to pray for these people. We want to pray for the unreached people groups in China. That God will open doors. And that there shall be opportunities. That they shall hear the word of God. And that they shall repent of their sins. And they shall know that God exists and that they shall become Christians. Hallelujah. So we want to pray specifically for uh, praying that the atheism promoted for so long and now so assiduously propagated in the education system will finally be revealed as hollow and deceptive lies. So we want to pray against this deception, against this deception. These are lies that there is no God. Hallelujah. And then secondary, we are going to pray also that all followers of Christ working in state structures might walk fortlessly and be a redemptive force within the government. Number three, we are going to pray that Christians in the caring and social professions find many openings to save the suffering and to show and speak to them about the love of Jesus. The last one. We are going to pray also for Christian lawyers. There are some Christian lawyers there that they shall be able to stand for justice on behalf of those and able to do so themselves. Hallelujah. So we are going to pray for boldness. We are going to pray that people shall be empowered with the Holy Spirit so that they are able to stand, even the Christian lawyers, that they are able to stand and defend justice. 
Hallelujah. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come once again before your presence. We are praying for the People's uh, Republic of China. We are going to, we are, we are praying for all the people that are there that have not been reached with the gospel. We pray, oh God, for opportunities. We pray, oh God, that indeed, Father God, doors shall be opened, that indeed they shall hear the word, and that they shall know that God, you exist, that God, you are the creator of all the universe. Lord, we thank you because of your love, that everlasting love, oh God, that you have loved all people, all humanities, oh God. Lord, we bless you, we magnify you, oh God, and we pray, oh God, that indeed all the systems that are propagated against you oh God we come against those systems in the name of Jesus Christ we pray my dear heavenly father even for those Christian workers in all structures in this nation oh God they shall stand boldly and defend their faith as they preach the gospel as they witness for Christ in the name of Jesus Christ Lord we thank you we bless you because of this redemptive force because of this redemptive power because of the move of the Holy Spirit because of the empowerment by the Holy Spirit we thank you oh God for all the caring and social professions that they shall find many op openings oh God to save the suffering even as as they share the, 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 the word of God with them in the name of Jesus. We pray also for all the Christian lawyers, oh God. Let them stand boldly and defend those that are believers, even those that are being persecuted, even those, Father God, that are stopped, even those that, that are denied the opportunities to share the word. Lord, we pray, oh God, may you give them the boldness. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, we magnify your holy name. Because when we pray, when we ask, oh God, you answer us. Because your word says, ask and it shall be given unto you. We have prayed for these lives, oh God. Let them receive Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. We thank you, we bless you. Hallelujah. We are also praying for ourselves as I say community. The theme for this year is light the city, lighting the city. And you know that the plan for or the pivot was launched some weeks ago to motivate us how we can reach to our communities, even in the marketplaces where we are working or where, I mean, the, the business places. Um, we want God to give us the boldness and the courage let God open doors for us that we shall not even be afraid. We shall not be scared to share the word of God even to our neighbors. Hallelujah. So we want God to give us the strength. We want God to open opportunities, many doors, so that we are able to reach out to the community with the word of God. We want us not to be scared. Hallelujah. We shall not be scared. And we declare that we shall not be scared. And we declare that we shall not be afraid to share the word of God. Let us just go to the Lord in prayer. As we pray for ourselves and we pray for the ICA community, that doors shall be opened. Indeed, God, we pray, may you open doors for us. May you open doors for us. May you give us courage. May you give us the spirit of boldness that indeed we shall continue sharing your word. That indeed we shall continue, Father God, indeed reaching out to the unreached people. Even those that have never heard the word, even in our communities, Lord, we pray, open those, open their hearts if, to hear your word, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we declare and decree that we shall not be scared. We declare and decree that we shall not be afraid. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, empower us. Empower us, oh God. Empower us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. We may take our seats. Hallelujah. It's giving time now. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? How many? Yeah, so I want to remind the church that this church has not stopped.
planting churches. <laughs> Hallelujah. The ICA community has not stopped planting churches. And lighting the city gives the ICA community to missionalize the whole city. <laughs> Hallelujah. So this in brings on board each and every member of ICA. Because sometimes when we go out and plant churches, maybe it's just a few selected people. But uh, this calling is for the whole church. So because of this, I'm saying this because today is the first week of the month, which is Mission Sunday. How many? Hallelujah. First of all, let me invite those that... Uh, have given their tithes during the week, and even those that are ready to pay their tithes. You can rise up so that we pray together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We give all the praise, all the honor, because of your children that have honored your word. We pray, may you bless them. May you keep them. May you make your face to shine upon their lives. May you so be gracious unto them in the name of Jesus. Even as we also give towards the missions, offerings, and the Sunday offerings, Lord, we pray, bless us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise to you. She returns to Botswana tomorrow, and uh, well, she continues to be a minister even there. Can we all rise if we can and stretch our hands towards her as we pray for her? Let's pray. Father, thank you for this gift of our sister OSC, who you gave to ICA, and specifically to ICA Praise Team. Thank you, oh God, for you allowed her to minister even to our lives in this place. We say thank you, O oh Lord. As she returns to Botswana, Lord, we lift her into your hands that you go, you're going to continue uh, using her as a precious vessel, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. She shall continue worshiping you and leading others into worshiping you and even sharing your word to those that don't know you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for your special anointing, O oh God, to continue flowing upon her in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, O oh God, we may be parting ways at uh, this time uh, here in Malawi. But if we don't see each other again here on earth, I pray you continue strengthening her to keep standing in the faith that we see each other again in heaven and rejoice again together in heaven and to sing your praises together around your throne, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for your special wisdom upon her as she takes up this uh, new job in Botswana. Give her wisdom so that she delivers with excellence. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Sonare so la Calvary
translation, this, this, this song says, Jesus Christ died for us on Calvary. Because he died on Calvary because of our sins. So when we say you're in Sijuana, we, we do that. It's just an expression that we are really, truly amazed. So we do yo, 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 yo. So when we say yo, 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 yo. Give that we can take your seats, please. If you can, ah, Pastor, could you give it to Pastor uh, Martha? I would want her to greet her at the church. This is an evangelist from America, she is Malawan. Please go ahead, then I'll explain a bit. <laughs> I greet you, church. I'm so glad to be here this morning. Thank you, the president. Uh, it's a blessing to be here, and I'm so excited that I'm a church. I'm here until June, so he will explain. <laughs> Around this city, uh, they are doing crusades. Maybe some of you have heard of the crusades. She leads a ministry called Kwezeke Ministries. She's an evangelist. Uh, she is Martha Nantoka. We have another Martha Nantoka, but she's different. She is Martha Nantoka. Uh, two, three years ago, uh, the husband calls me and says, Brother Henson, do you know that the Lord has lifted my wife so much? <laughs> my, my wife is now an international evangelist. <laughs> so she, they, last year they were in Blantyre, uh, covered a lot of places in Blantyre. Uh, they are going throughout the suburbs of Lilongwe from Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This week, where are you? Mwenela Towns, this side. Next week, they will be in Kauma. Uh, so for us who are this side, east, let's take advantage. Uh, when people get born again in there, let's take advantage. Uh, we can do consolidation. <laughs> so let's, let's take advantage of the crusades, and we are so grateful. I thank you so much for the investment and everything that uh, you do. Pastor Roy was with us uh, a few years ago. He came, with, uh, was uh, teaching at Magu, and uh, some of you, you do know him. Uh, he preached his last sermon when he was leaving uh, for the U.S. in the tent where we were there. Uh, so this is uh, the madam and evangelist who's been doing great work. They have also a mission center uh, in Mozambique and uh, a Bible school there. So from here, she'll be uh, relocating to Mozambique to do some work there. 
So she literally spends her close to uh, five to six months when she comes and does the work. Uh, please, if you can, uh, pray for, uh, for them. They have huge uh, cost implications that uh, they run these meetings. If you see them, they are huge uh, crusades. They are huge crusades. So please, if you can be able to uh, patronize them, the people from this side, I will challenge you if you can be able to visit and be with them next Friday, Saturday, Sunday in Kauma area. Amen. Kwezeke Ministries, we give God the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you please stand on your feet? Welcome two, three people and tell them welcome in the house of the Lord. Give them a fist bump. Rejoice with them. Amen. Amen. Give somebody a smile. Give somebody a smile. Hallelujah. Please don't be, don't be greedy with a smile. You on top there, don't be greedy with a smile. Ankata, don't be greedy with a, uh, Anguilla, don't be greedy with a smile. Please do it. Be open and give it to others. Amen. We are so grateful uh, to the Lord uh, for this opportunity that we can spend time together in his presence, worshiping him, him blessing us, and hearing from his word. What a powerful and wonderful time together. Would you turn to the scriptures? We want to walk on those listening by radio, watching by television, uh, CNN, uh, television, and uh, live streaming, Facebook and YouTube. You are all welcome uh, to uh, the International Christian Assembly. We want to read from uh, Acts chapter number 2, Acts chapter number 2, uh, verse um, 42, Acts chapter number 2, verse 42, and we'll also read Acts chapter number 26, verse 18, and 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse 3 to verse 4. Today we begin uh, a mini-series about three messages. Uh, the series we have, we are calling it Intentional or intentionally pursuing the mission of Jesus, part number one. Intentionally pursuing the mission of Jesus, part number one. And our emphasis today is praying for the unserved. Praying for the unserved. Hear the word of the Lord. Acts chapter number two, verse 42. This should be a, a, a text you can memorize. It's easy. Uh, it says, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. These are habits that the church uh, developed at its early formative period. The church devoted itself to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayers. Last month, throughout last month, we dealt with the first component, the apostles' teaching. We've carried through uh, the discussion and the exploration of the apostles' teaching, but with an emphasis of the power of his resurrection. Today, we want to deal with the last aspect of the habits of the church, that is the prayers, the prayers. And that's what we want to emphasize today. Verse number 18 of chapter number 26, Acts. He says, to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. This is a charge Jesus Christ is giving to Paul when he's been flowed to the floor and uh, he's hearing Jesus Christ, he's saying, you are persecuting me. And Paul says, who are you? And during this conversation, Jesus Christ gives him this charge. He says, I would want you to open their eyes, the Gentiles, so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among the sanctified. That is the charge that Paul received. It's the same charge that the church has received. And we want to deal with this charge and see how we can be able to participate in praying for the unsaved. Second Corinthians chapter number four. Second Corinthians chapter number four, verse number three and verse number four. It says, and even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. It says there are times when the gospel is veiled, the gospel is hidden, the gospel is blocked. But I want you to know when it is blocked, it's only blocked to those who are perishing. 
It is blocked, it is veiled, it's hidden to those who are perishing. And who are these who are perishing? He says, in their case, the God of this world has blinded their minds uh, of their unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? We are grateful, Father, for the reading of your word. May you minister to us through this text. Thank you, O God. Now I pray, Father, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable before you, my rock and my redeemer. May you minister these to your children. We thank you, we bless you. Holy Spirit, may you minister to us and through us. We thank you, we bless you in Jesus' name. As every saint say, amen. Thank you for taking your seats in the presence of the Lord. As I have already uh, uh, spoken. I have said this is uh, a mini series, and we want to talk about praying for the unserved, praying for the unserved, praying for the unserved. And my recurrent thought is very brief, and it uh, articulates what we are doing during this time. This is what it says: to win others for Christ, we must intentionally. Plan, prepare, and pray for them. To win others for Christ, we must intentionally plan, prepare, and pray. Plan, prepare, and pray. Plan, prepare, and pray. Intentionality is the emphasis of this message today. Intentionality. Intentionality. Uh, there are times the church is never intentional about winning others to the Lord. Uh, evangelist uh, Nantoka, she's intentional. She's traveled, raised money. People have invested with intentionality to come and preach. But many times, individuals in the church, they may stay in the church for 30 years, 40 years. They are born again, but there's no intentionality about winning others for Christ. There is no pre-arranged focus to win others for Christ. Today, we want to emphasize this intentionality. It is critical for us to be intentional about winning others to Christ. We must remember that um, people do not become born again accidentally. We need to remember that. And in today's message, I would want to encourage you and to encourage myself that we must be intentional about uh, the preaching of the gospel to others. The Lord Jesus, when he left, he gave us a mission. This mission, when you distill it, Jesus gives five commissions throughout all the four gospels and the book of Acts. In, uh, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to verse 20, uh, in Mark chapter 16, uh, verse uh, 15, in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, in John chapter 20, uh, and in Acts chapter number 1, verse 8, we find five distinct statements that Jesus Christ gives. They are the same, but he says them in different ways. It's the same charge. Go and preach the gospel, so that people come to know uh, him as Lord and Savior and disciple them. That's the same charge, but it's spoken in five distinct uh, texts throughout uh, the Gospels and the book of Acts. Jesus Christ, when he gives this charge, the charge is that we win souls and disciple believers. That's a charge. The charge is go win souls and disciple believers. So when we are talking about intentionality, we are talking about being intentional in winning souls. Being intentional in discipling believers. Being very clear, being focused that what I am going to do as a believer is to invest in winning souls. Is to invest in discipling others is to invest in making sure that others have come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. 
and that when they have come to, uh, they have known him, they are also discipled until they mature to the point that they too are able to win others to the Lord. Very intentional. Very intentional. I want also to emphasize that over the years, uh, the church, the church has used many different methods to express uh, the desire to win souls and to disciple believers. The church has used many, many different methods. Over the past 2,000 years, the church has used many methods. Uh, some methods are very uh, embedded in the culture, embedded in the location. Some methods cannot be transferred to other geographical places because they, you can't transfer. There are some specific things in a particular location that gives it strength. And if you were to take that method and use it somewhere, it will never work. Uh, there are various methods, uh, methods of crusades, methods of open air, methods of uh, street evangelism, methods door-to-door, uh, -door, methods in which uh, you witness uh, using an event, uh, coffee time, uh, methods using uh, uh, your uh, professional uh, touch and connection. There are various methods that we use as a church. But the idea is that we need to reach out to everyone. But it is important for us to know that sometimes the methods that we pursue to win souls and disciple believers may not bring fruits. Sometimes the methods that we have invested money, that we have poured in efforts, that we have prayed for, they may not be as strong to bring out uh, the fruit. It's very, very important for us to be aware of that. There are some methods that are more uh, impactive. The other methods are not as, uh, as impactful as you'd want. It is a responsibility of a church and it's a responsibility of every member to change methods, to interrogate methods, to shift methods, to stop methods if they are not working. It is our responsibility to check, am I being effective in this light? If I'm not effective in this light change, because it is important for us to participate fully in the work of evangelism and in the work of discipleship. This is the mission that Jesus Christ has left us with. Very, very important. Do not be scared to stop a particular method. Why? Because methods do change, but principles don't. The principle that we're working on here is winning souls and discipling believers, but methods may be different. Methods may be different. So do not die over a methodology. Or do not curse other people over a methodology. Uh, I can tell you, uh, uh, young people, some methods they use, a lot of uh, uh, adults who are above 40 may be scared. Young people may come with hip hop and, uh, you know, chains around and uh, tattoos everywhere. And you look at them and you say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, methods do change. Principles remain. But the fact and the point to make is, we win souls, we disciple believers. We have to be intentional to win souls and disciple believers. Here at the International Christian Assembly, we have pursued a method of meeting in small groups from house to house, that is in uh, cell groups, and at the same time have celebration of services like we are having right now. Uh, so we meet during the week from house to house, and on Sunday and in conference times, we meet together in a celebration uh, 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 event in which we worship together. But we largely emphasize small groups. We emphasize cells. Uh, we emphasize cells because it's important for us to understand. Jesus Christ also used uh, part of this uh, small group uh, concept. So we use that. It's a method. It's a method. It's a method. Um, at one time, we started, the people that had uh, started this church, uh, His Excellence and the Madame, uh, they started with a home cell system right at the very beginning. This church has never had a Bible study, weekly Bible study on Wednesday. 
it began with a cell-based approach. Never ever had a Bible study, a weekly Bible study. Why at the time they began, uh, the church was at the uh, Assemblies of God School of Theology and the students were meeting in the same places where we were meeting. Not a lot of buildings were built then. So it was decided we will go into cell. Um, so ever since we've been to cell. But we also changed the form of cells from 2009. We change. Now we use the cell system we call the super 12 cell. This super 12 cell is where an emphasis of uh, uh, groups of 12s, groups of 12. Other people call them government of 12s or leadership through uh, 12s. That's what we emphasize. So every Monday evening, Pastor Christine and myself, we meet about, currently we meet 10 uh, units, 10 uh, families. Uh, who are also spread across the, uh, the city as zonal pastors, zonal uh, leaders. And uh, they also have meetings on Tuesday. Uh, they are also pushing to have their 12. We are yet to fill in our last two. The last two, I'm sorry, the last two is, one is a pastor from Kiswahili. The other one is a pastor from the Asian community. Our pastor from Asian community hasn't uh, returned. Uh, pastor Sam is yet to come back. And we are seeking and praying that God gives us also a pastor in the uh, Kiswahili community. Pastor Jerry and Pastor uh, Joel, they are standing in as uh, preachers in the Kiswahili community. But we want a leader from those two to be on our uh, trove. So through these troves, now we are able to disciple others. Our people that come to our trove, they have their trove and they continue to disciple. The point is that each and every one of us, we seek to win others. We seek to uh, pray with them, teach, with, teach them, and be able to see that they also win others. And we continue to multiply so this is not a cell division system, it's a cell multiplication system. There's a difference. This is not a cell division, but a cell multiplication. Why are we doing this? Uh, we want us to show that there must be intentionality in whatsoever we do. So when you see the G12 or the Super uh, 12, it is a system that follows a structured process of winning souls and discipling until those who are being discipled are equally ready to replicate the strategy. It is intentional. It is intentional. Would you turn to your neighbor and tell them intentional? Tell them again, be intentional. Be intentional to win. Be intentional to disciple. So it is intentionality that is embedded in the whole system that we are doing. So the super 10 system is based, like I've said, on uh, this principle that we have to be focused, be intentional, follow through, and be preoccupied with the targets that we have. Do you know, brothers and sisters, greatness is rarely an accidental achievement. Greatness is rarely an accidental achievement. You don't come, wake up in the morning, abracata, abracata, you are great. I, I, would you turn to your neighbor and say, if you have accidental greatness, that's witchcraft. Tell your friend. <laughs> Tell your friend, if you have accidental uh, uh, greatness, you have stolen. If you have got accidental greatness, you are corrupt. I'm telling you the truth. It is not accidental. It is always intentional. It is always pre-focused. You invest. You work towards it. You are focused. You have targets. You invest your resources. You invest your time. You invest your prayer. You move towards it. Sometimes your targets, you don't meet them. Sometimes you meander, but you are going still to the same direction. Sometimes you go through the valleys, but you are going through the same direction. Greatness is intentional. To achieve greatness is to be intentional. It is important for us to do that. But many times we want to achieve greatness without intentionality, without effort, without 
without uh, focus, without vision, but we want a bracket, a bracket that tomorrow you are on top of the hill. I have said that's witchcraft and that's corruption because in greatness demands hard work. To achieve anything worth living for, it demands hard work. Similarly, winning souls and discipling believers do not appear in our society by chance. Winning souls, discipling believers, it will not just happen accidentally. It happens through a series of activities that are set and pursued intentionally. Winning souls happen when we have put in specific activities. We have dreamed, we've prayed, we've put in activities. We pursue them, we invest in there. Then we reach out to people. Winning people comes with intentionality. Winning people for Christ comes with intentionality. We have to be proactive. We have to be deliberate in it. Winning others for Christ demands intentionality. So in the, um, at the International Christian Assembly, we have uh, a ministry pathway that we have envisaged that when people come to know Jesus Christ, we intentionally support them. Therefore, we intentionally pray for people, intentionally lead people, and then we intentionally support them to go from one uh, phase of life to another. And this part of intentionality means that we give specific body of knowledge, body of teachings, and we prepare people so that whatever life experiences they have, they can internalize using their, uh, the knowledge they have, uh, be able to apply to their lives. The knowledge they get they apply to their decision making process. The, the knowledge they get they apply to whatever they are doing in the marketplace. Why? Because knowledge is essential. Knowledge can do three things. Knowledge can be able to give you the cognitive ability to know and to do things. Number two, it can give you skills. It can give you ability to do things for uh, uh, your life. At the same time, knowledge can be powerful to change your character. So knowledge is is empowerment. So we give specific levels of knowledge so that people are empowered to move from one stage of glory to another, one stage of strength to another, one stage of faith to another. So we intentionally do that, intentionally do that. So we have um, uh, a pathway. This pathway looks like this. If you see the diagram, if you've got the knots, we've put it in the diagram. So over, uh, you know, periods of time, we follow this specific uh, diagram. We ensure that we are winning people to Christ. So when people are won to Christ, we push them into the, or we allow them to come into a place where they have a body of knowledge that ensures that they are maturing in Christ. Now, knowledge alone is not enough to allow mat maturity. You have to uh, add knowledge to practice. You have to allow knowledge to transform your character, to transform your life to transform your habits, to transform your attitudes, to transform what you do. So that is part of what is called as consolidation. So at ICA, we provide the avenue for a class that where we teach. But it is you and I that has to apply this knowledge to our life. Many, many times when knowledge is just head knowledge and we have never put it into, acti into activities, into our life, that knowledge becomes a nuisance to us. Actually, Jesus Christ implies that if you've never applied the knowledge that you've received, he will never give you further knowledge. He'll never give you further revelation. If you've never applied, if you've never obeyed the prior knowledge and the revelation he has given you, then you will not go to the next level. Jesus Christ does not waste stages of learning. It doesn't take you to the next stage if you've never applied. That's what it is in, uh, in the growth process. You have to apply the knowledge you receive at this stage so that it can take you to the next stage. So it's important and part of that is obedience. Obedience is a key to whatsoever we receive. So today I'm going to be talking about something that will demand your obedience, that will demand your application into uh, this. Now, two weeks ago, we launched... Uh, um, 
a strategy we called P40. Uh, uh, Pastor Jerry uh, stood in front here and uh, introduced us to a strategy of P40. P40 stands for Plan 40. Uh, P40, 40 is 40 days. Our desire is to be intentional about winning souls. So we said we are going to curve, curve rather, uh, 40 days in our calendar. In these 40 days, we are going to uh, pray for people. We are going also to lead people to Christ intentionally. Then when we have led them to Christ, we can bring them now into the second stage of consolidation. In the consolidation, we have a class. There we teach a class in the consolidation. We call it life Christ or maturing in Christ. So two weeks ago, we started this plan 40. So we have 40 days. We've already done two weeks already. In these 40 days, we've done 14 days already. Today is uh, the 14th. Okay? And in Plan 40, there are three things that we are emphasizing in Plan 40. Number one, we plan and cast vision. So if you are a soil leader, if you are a zone leader, if you are a member of the church, you plan and cast vision. Right now, what I'm doing, I'm casting vision. I'm telling you the future. I'm telling you the direction of uh, uh, where we are going. We plan and cast vision. We are casting vision for reaching souls. So if you are a cell leader in this plan 40, you cast vision in your cell. And you talk about we want to win souls. We want to do it this way. So you plan. You go you know, to the drawing board and you plan. The second thing we do in the plan uh, for the P40 is we prepare for the next level, the consolidation level. And usually that is more on the pastors. We prepare for the teachers and the people that will run the next uh, phrase. So we are hoping that after the plan 40, you will bring people to the Lord and we'll be able to bring these into the training. Amen. Plan uh, consolidation phase has nine weeks. After nine weeks, we have baptism. Did you hear what I said? Consolid consolidation phase has got nine weeks of training. After nine weeks, we have training. Last week, we had baptism. How many did we baptize? I'll repeat. How many did we baptize? We we'll turn to your neighbor and just nudge them. Uh, ask them, how many did we baptize? Okay, tell your neighbor and say, that should be the last time we baptize a few numbers. Turn to your neighbor and tell them. Say, Habi, my wife, that's the last time we baptize the fewest number in our church. Okay? Why? Because every one of you now, with intentionality, we are going to be bringing people to the Lord, and they will go into the process we should be able to have more people come to know Jesus Christ. So just for the sake of numbers, let's just ignore every one of you. Let's just talk about my, you know, my uh, pastor's cell. We have currently, we have 10 in the uh, pastor's cell, 10 units. And in this plan 40, what we are doing, so we said plan, prepare. The third layer is pray. Okay, pray. So we have decided that everyone in the team prays for three names. So during the P40, we talked about everyone of you looking for three names that you are going to be praying for in these 40 days. Hello? Three names in these 40 days. This could be names of your neighbor, names of your workmates, names of your uh, clan uh, kinsmen, names uh, of your enemy, names of your friends, uh, names of uh, acquaintances. Yeah, every uh, form of people. It could be the neighbor you've, you are always scared of, the neighbor that looks more, you know, uh, up the scale than you. You know, everyone, you bring them, you are wanting to pray for them. Everyone is a target for prayer. So you look for three names. So in the cell, in the cell, you pair into three units. So let's imagine we are three pastors, Pastor Jerry, Pastor Sarah, three of us 
She comes with three. He comes with three. I come with three. And we hold each other accountable for praying for these nine names. It's supposed to be the P40 period. The last five days of the P40 is evangelistic uh, campaign. We may do it in our zones. We may do it in the open air. We may do it at a coffee uh, place. Uh, we are going to give an opportunity for those three persons we've been praying for to be confronted with the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That is intentionality. Did you hear what I said? We are being intentional, so we are going to pray for 3-3. Three, three. So just imagine the 10 units uh, of our Pastor Luesha's uh, Super t uh, 12. 10 units as of now. If each unit had three, how many are those? 30. Even if we get only uh, two-thirds, just two, 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 it's 20 persons coming to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But what of your unit? What of your unit? What of your unit? So we are hoping that we can have people that have come to know Jesus Christ that are many and they are, they are being ushered into the next phase because it is only after that phase that we baptize people in water. This is intentionality on steroids. Intentionality on steroids. We are really, really pushing intentionality. Would you turn to your neighbor and say, please do not offend, get offended. Tell them this train already started off. You are late. Intentionality. Okay? Intentionality. So this is what we are doing. So P40 is plan and cast vision. Prepare for the next stage. And number three, pray. So today's message is really to talk about how to pray for those three. How to pray. So it's just really giving us uh, some uh, capacity, some understanding of how to pray for those three. As we, this is just uh, really a step in the, in the, in the, on the threshold, just a step. It's not everything, but a bit of capacity. During the week, we will uh, provide more, uh, more ways in how to pray for. But today, I want us to talk about four areas in how we can pray for those three and how we can pray for the city. Because if there is no intentionality, we will not reach the city. If there is no intentionality, we will always be wishing Turn to your neighbor and tell them, I am not wishing, I want to do it. Tell your neighbor again, neighbor behind, he says, if you have things on your dream chart and you don't participate in working on them, it is a wish list. I'll repeat. If you have things on your vision board, Yet you do not invest anything. You don't invest time. You don't invest prayer. You don't invest uh, resources. That is a wish list. We are not doing a wish list here. Hallelujah. We are not doing a wish list. We are not wishing. We want to do it. We want to do it. We want to win souls. We want to disciple believers. And this methodology helps everyone to participate. It is not only for people that stand in front here. It's not only people who are evangelists that come from far. No, it's everyone in the local church wins souls, disciple believers. Amen. And this aspect should not scare us because it is something that is so friendly because God has given us the power to do it. So I want to speak about four areas of uh, uh, prayer. Why should we do that? Because we must know that people without Jesus are spiritually blind, they are walking in darkness, and they are bound by sin and bound by the devil. I'll repeat. People without Jesus, they are blind, they are walking in darkness, they are bound by sin, and they are bound by the devil. I repeat, people without Jesus Christ, they are blind. 
they are walking in darkness. They are bound by sin and they are bound by the yokes of demonic spirits. And if we are going to win them, to wrestle them from all these, we need to first pray. So foundational to what we are doing now, to winning souls, is prayer. Hallelujah. Foundational is prayer. So today, I want to quickly give four areas of uh, stressing of how we pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. How are we going to pray for those three? How are you going to pray for the city? How are we going to pray for the people that we have identified? How are we going to pray for our kinsmen we've identified? Our peers, our, work, uh, our workmates, our, our neighbors, our enemies, our friends, our acquaintances. How are we going to pray for those that we really believe they need this, the, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. How are we going to pray for them? Area of prayer number one. Area of prayer number one. We need to bind the strong man. We need to learn how to bind the strong man. So we pray by binding the strong man. Matthew chapter number 12, verse 29. Uh, Luke chapter number 11, verse 21 and 29. Mark chapter number 3, uh, starting from about verse 19, going forth. Jesus Christ is accused. They call him, they say, he is casting out demons by the spirit of Beelzebub. So they come to him and says, you are casting out spirit by Beelzebub. Jesus Christ laughs and he says, that can't work. If it were so, then the kingdom of the devil would have been divided by now. It would have collapsed kare kare. No, I am not uh, casting out demons by Beelzebub. So Jesus Christ was implying a demon cannot cast out a demon. That's an implication. So when you take somebody who is sick and you take them, you know, to the, uh, uh, to the witch doctors and you're thinking they are going to come back with the demons gone out, you are lying to yourself. What happens is that they infuse in another higher demons, which makes these demons just to stay uh, uh, idle for a little while. What will happen is that the case will be worse than they weren't. That is what happens. So Jesus Christ gives an example. He says, no, no, no. What actually happens, if somebody wants to win the spoils from a strong man, you need first to bind the strong man. So Jesus introduces this symbol, this picture of a strong man. He says, if anyone is bound by the devil, if anyone is bound by sin, they are like under, you know, the watch of this strong man. If you want to have them rescued, you need to bind the strong man. What is a strong man? A strong man is a demonic power con uh, controlling a person or controlling an area, giving influence in that geographical place, having control. And if you are going to win over that person, if you want to win that person to Jesus Christ, learn to bind the strong man. Very, very important. So without binding the strong man, souls might not be won to Christ. If you don't pray specifically for those three, you do not bring them and say, Lord, I'm binding the strong man within them. I'm binding, binding the demonic power in, in control over their lives. I'm binding the strong man and the demonic power in control over their appetites. I'm binding the strong man, the demonic power in control over their visions and their dreams. You will not win them. So what we are doing in this P40 is to uh, pray and bind the strong man in those three persons we have brought. And we are also binding the strong man over this city in Jesus' name. That's what we are doing. Why? Because the Bible also shows that there are many, many times that there are territorial spirits that are able to influence nations. In Daniel chapter number 10, uh, Daniel prayed because he had come to a place of understanding that the time God had allocated for them to stay in, uh, in exile had finished. So he goes to the Lord in prayer. He starts uh, fasting. The Bible says he had no pleasant bread when he started fasting. He fasted for 21 days. After 21 days, an angel came and talked to him and he said, this is what the angel said. This is Archangel Michael now who is giving a revelation. He says, the very day you prayed, the very day you started praying, God dispatched an angelic uh, a being to bring an answer. The very day you started, God dispatched an angel. But that angel was blocked. 
that angel was blocked by another more powerful demonic entity. A demonic entity that was more powerful than this angel that God sent to bring an answer to Daniel. Until God says, he now tells Archangel Michael, you go and rescue the other angel who cannot penetrate through that blockade. So that angel, uh, 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 chief uh, 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 Archangel Michael comes, he penetrates through the blockade and brings an answer. And in explaining, Michael says, you know what? God had done this, but the blockade was put by a prince, a principality, and he named that principality the Prince of Persia. And then he says, from here now, after we have fought the Prince of Persia, we are going to the prince and uh, fight the Prince of Greece. So it seems on territories, there are angelic or demonic powers that may influence. Demonic powers that may influence in the spirit realm. And, and if we don't understand the work of the spirit realm, we can continue fighting and for pushing and hustling on the, on the ground here, but nothing is moving. We need also to blast in the spirit realm. There are angelic beings, demonic powers, principalities that needs to be bound, that are at work in the heavenly places. It is important for us to understand. So if ever we are going to light the city, part of the prayer is to bind the strong man over the long way in the name of Jesus. Part of the prayer is to pray, God, we resist every territorial spirit at work in, this, in the spirit over the long way. God, we come against these territorial spirits that brings the work backwards, that brings the work never to go forward, but always bring the work backwards. We come against them in the name of Jesus. God, we identify the strong men over this city in Jesus' name. And we bring them down. We bind them. And we make them not to have any impact and any power over this city. We need to pray such prayers. Similarly for your three, you need to pray, Lord, I come against every demonic power over such and such. I pray against, oh God, the demonic power that might control their appetites, that might control their cravings. Lord, I come against every demonic power that may control their relationships. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke them and I make them of no effect over their lives in Jesus' name. You need to learn to speak to those powers in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That is how we pray for those three. Until God makes the strong man not have any power over his spoils. We need to release the captives by prayer. That's foundational. So we are praying for the unsaved. Why? Without binding the strong man, souls might not be won to Christ. Without binding the strong man also over a territory, graces that the Lord has for that community may be locked. This is this is important. I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me, brothers and sisters. I want you to hear me. God may give a grace for a geographical place. God may give a grace for a nation. And if we have never engaged in prayer enough, that grace may not be released. Why? Because it's blocked. I want you to know, I want you to see, the first day, the first day Daniel prayed, God released us. Are you hearing me? Are we together? The first day he prayed, God released us. And then later on, 21 days later, that's when Daniel receives an answer. Do you know there are times we have prayed and God has sent graces for this nation. But because we have not engaged, we've never engaged in sustained prayer. We've prayed once and we've never engaged in sustained prayer and nothing has happened. I hear stand and remind you that these graces may be unlocked when we consistently, persistently pray, intentionally pray. We invest into prayer. We invest in being available at the altar of God and pray for the city. Hallelujah. Are we going to light the city? Let's pray for the city. 
Let's pray for the city. Let's pray that the strong man is bound. Let's pray that the strong man who binds people, who binds authorities, who binds systems, who binds uh, social amenities in wrong ways, who pray that these, these strong men with strong demonic powers, demonic entities shall be bound, broken, made to none effect by the grace of God. Hallelujah. That's what we are going to pray for. The second, the second prayer area is recognizing and breaking strongholds. Recognizing and breaking strongholds. It's important. Recognizing and breaking strongholds. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, verse number 3, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy uh, strongholds. What are strongholds? Strongholds are houses of thoughts. Strongholds are systems of thinking. Strongholds are philosophies of thinking. Uh, philosophies are the ones that dictate where the direction of action goes. I'll repeat, strongholds are house of thoughts. Strongholds are philosophies, are worldviews, are systems of thinking. The devil and rather the devil hides in a system of thinking and strongholds or our way of thinking dictates where we go, dictates our behavior, dictates our thinking. As a man thinketh, so is he. So strongholds are house of thoughts. That's what the Bible says. It says we destroy arguments and every loft opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey God. So three times you think you see philosophies, opinions, arguments, the ways of thinking. So strongholds are household, houses of thoughts. They are places of hiding, of influence. In, in thoughts, is in philosophies, is in opinions. And what we think dictates what we do. So the devil is able to fight and raises a philosophy above the knowledge of Jesus Christ and shows that what they believe is far above the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Strongholds, the th these ways of thinking dictates our behavior, dictates our behavior. It's important for us to recognize. So you recognize strongholds in the area. Break those strongholds. Pray against those strongholds. So recognize the power. Recognize the way of thinking. Recognize the attitudes. Do you know there are many times in this nation, they are particular strongholds we've never run away from. Sometimes this nation is a nation of gamble, grumbling. You know that? We grumble for everything. We, we complain over everything. We complain over everything. You are in a bus, you'll be complaining. You are in the plane, you'll be complaining. I mean, we complain over everything. It is a stronghold. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of thinking. We, we do not deliberately engage in the positive way of thinking. We engage in the negative way of thinking. It is a stronghold. It is something that we need to resist. It's something we need to bring down. It's something we need to speak against. That we are not going to be negative all the time. We are not going just to say things, Ill, evil things for no apparent reason. That is a stronghold. You go against it. You pray, God, I come against every negative thought in the name of Jesus. I pull it down under the feet of Jesus Christ. I come against it in Jesus' name. You are pulling down a, a system of thinking. As a man thinketh, so is he. May we think positive thoughts. May we think thoughts of the future. May we think you know, thoughts that will bring us victory. Not that will make us to complain and stumble all the time. You find people that are complaining, and you don't even know what they are complaining about, you immediately join. You don't even know the thought. You don't even know the discussion. And you just say, hey, the entry place. I, I mean, that's how we are. Those are strongholds, brothers and sisters. We need to identify them. They'll never lead us anywhere. They'll never lead us anywhere. Strongholds, recognize the strongholds. Some strongholds include occultic, uh, you know, uh, strongholds. They include, you know, the preoccupation with the hidden, the latent, witchcraft, you know, divination, satanism. Every time they're being superstitious, it's a stronghold. 
Everything that happens, you want you know, to relate it to superstition. Everything, it's a stronghold. And strongholds of uh, Satanism, new age. Some strongholds is a contamination that comes because you've doubled in the spirit realm. You've doubled with the Vimbuza spirit. You've doubled with the Majin spirit. You've doubled with the Marine spirit. It is a stronghold. You are affected by those strongholds. You are affected by that connection. It is important that when we pray for these three, the people that we've targeted for, we pray breaking every stronghold, breaking, coming against every form of attachment to evil. We rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Father, I elevate such and such, Mr. Uje and Uje. I pray for them. I ask, oh God, may you break the yoke of the enemy over their lives. I present them to you. I pray, oh God, that whatever contamination, whatever attachment they have had with the evil spirit, I break them in the name of Jesus. That is how we pray over strongholds. Strongholds breaking the bondages of evil, breaking the bondage of fear, breaking the bondage of negativism, breaking every stronghold that may assail that person. You know, the person you are praying for, they are held by sin, they are held by the devil, their eyes of the spirit are blind, they are walking in darkness. They are not going just to come free. You will have to pray for them. If everyone was just coming without being prayed for, if everyone was coming without being the Holy Spirit wooing them, everyone of us would have been born again in our sleep. But that's not so. The church must pray. You have to pray. You have to allow God, his spirit to over, over the lives of the people that you are praying for. So demonic strongmen, strongmen are also empowered by demonic strongholds. Demonic entities, they leverage over strongholds. I'll repeat. Demonic strong men, demonic spirits leverage on strongholds. When they see that you are tied to a particular stronghold, they leverage and they make acceleration of their bondage from the strongholds. If they know that you complain every time, they will leverage over that. If they know that you are always negative, you see things from a negative, they will leverage over that. Do you know God was able you know, to take a whole clan, a whole clan, a whole branch of a clan and open the, uh, the, the, the ground and swallow them because of uh, complaining. God doesn't like complaining but the devil likes complaining. He leverages it to his own glory, to his own power, to his own, to, bond, to, to put people under bondage. Would you turn to your neighbor and tell them please run away from evil strongholds in Jesus' name. Come on, tell them, allow Jesus to break every stronghold in Jesus' name. So, but it becomes very particularly difficult for us to recognize a strong man, for us to recognize the strongholds. So it becomes important for us to pray according to the scriptures and according to the spirit. I would repeat, it is important for us to, rec to know that it may be difficult for us to recognize a strong man. It will be difficult for us to understand and recognize who is the demonic power in that family. Who is the demonic power in that village? What is the demonic entity in that village? What is the demonic prince over this city? We want to light the city. So sometimes we have to go, not sometimes, every time we have to go to the scriptures and understand what the scripture says. But there will be many times we have no knowledge because these things are happening on the spirit realm. So what do you do? You pray in the spirit. You pray in the spirit. You pray in tongues. The Bible says he who prays in the spirit, the mind does not understand, but the spirit speaks mysteries to God. God drops that understanding in your heart as you pray in the spirit. So brothers and sisters, I am asking you, if you are going to pray for those three, pray, pray in tongues until God forms those uh, uh, thoughts, forms that revelation. But it is for you to pray. It's not for you to share. Amen? You start sharing, you start becoming a witch doctor. 
Pray so that as God drops that revelation in you, pray for those things. There will be things that God will reveal about this city. And they are spiritual things. They will never even be put and customized into the scriptures. God is just pointing to you. Pray in the spirit. Do not share it with me. I will not understand. It's by the spirit. Bring and pray to the Lord. Bring and pray to the Lord. Pray in tongues. Brothers, pray in tongues. Sisters, pray in tongues. And for, uh, for the Bible, according to Jesus, how long do you pray? A minimum of? Not five minutes, not ten minutes. A minimum of one hour. It's not me. Please don't blame me. Go into the scriptures. Jesus Christ told the apostles, those three, he says, ah, you can't even pray for, with me at least one hour. At least, actually, at least is a minimum. But if I you, five minutes, tatopa. No, I pray by the grace of God. For these three people we are praying for, let's invest prayer. Let's invest time. Hallelujah. Invest prayer. Invest all your time praying for those. You are praying for those. Pray in the spirit to design the strong man and the strong words. Number three, pray for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Pray for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. That's a third, third area of prayer. Third area of prayer, pray for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 16 verse 8, Jesus Christ says, It's the Holy Spirit who convicts the world of sin, of judgment, and of righteousness. The Holy Spirit is the one who has the capacity to woo people to, uh, to himself. Now what? is conviction. Conviction is a process laid by the Holy Spirit where he exposes the sin reality in a person with the aim of bringing them to a sin awareness. I'll repeat. It is laid by the Holy Spirit where God exposes the sin reality. I want you to know that there are many times when people they are sinning, they are never aware that what they are doing is sin. Did you hear what I said? There are times people, they can be killing somebody. They can be butchering somebody. They have an explanation for it. They are not calling it sin. The Holy Spirit is the one who brings, exposes this reality to them and brings an awareness, a guilt awareness in them. The wrongness in them that this is sin. That is only done by the Holy Spirit. That's foundational to anyone who comes to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. This foundational aspect where people have to be aware of sin. Ah, this is sin. This thing I'm doing is bad. This is awareness that is drawn by the Holy Spirit. It's not drawn by individuals. I'm a preacher in front here, but the Holy Spirit is doing his mighty work there. It's a sense in which you become aware that God is speaking to you and that you have done something. This sense of wrongness, this sense of knowing that you are wrong comes from the Holy Spirit. Peter, when he preached on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says, as he was coming to the end of the preaching, chapter uh, 2 of Acts, verse 38, the Bible says they were cut to their spirit. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. That when the gospel is being preached, when the anointing is flowing, people see this cutting in their spirit. And first and foremost, they sense the guilt. Now, just sensing the guilt is enough. It's not enough. But they are drawn to say, I need what the Holy Spirit is able to offer. That is conviction. And the work of God always works with this conviction. So you and I, we need to pray for the conviction. We need to pray for our three. We need to pray for the city. We need to pray, Lord, may you raise a powerful level of conviction into the city. May the people know that they have sinned against you. May the people know that they have wronged against you. And their consciousness, let them be aware of sin so that when the gospel is preached, they can rush to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. This, that is conviction. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, the power of conviction also works with, with believers. Right now, as I stand here, there could be some things that God would be throwing into your hearts and dropping them into your spirit. And you may be thinking, ah, the pastor was told to say something about me. No, I was never told. 
It is the Holy Spirit who dropped it and spoke it into your heart and he brought that conviction, that pricking, that spearing of the word, a double-edged sword that, you know, divides. That power to do that is the conviction of the Holy Spirit. We need to pray that the Holy Spirit would convict our three. The Holy Spirit, if this city is going to come to Jesus, we need to come to places where people are ready to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I read of stories, you know, stories of yesterday, last year, of a uh, hundred years ago, uh, out of uh, America when the revival was happening, out of uh, uh, revival there, the revival of Charles Finney. You know, revivals that were when Charles Finney would be in a train where the seats would be opposite to each other. People are seated there, he's seated here, and people start crying that are opposite. They start shedding tears. And when he asks them why, he says, I'm feeling a sense of guilt of my sins. That's conviction. You want to, account, to go into a city where the Holy Spirit has fallen down and there is conviction. Conviction in the boardroom. There's so much conviction in the boardroom that people are breaking before the presence of God. And they are repenting of their sins. That you go into a place where some people that did bad business against you, they come back and they say, what I did was wrong. That is conviction. That's the power of God. That's our being aware of their wrongness. That can only happen when the Holy Spirit is at work. We pray that this conviction should be so varied, so broad in this city. That when you go to places to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, people are ready. There's a power of conviction. People are breaking down. People are reaching out and saying, yes. I feel it. They start hitting their chest. I feel it. I need to repent. That is conviction. That is conviction. The power of God breaking the strong ones. They are coming to kneel before God. The power of God breaking those that are wealthy, that are powerful, that the, the elite of our societies, they give their knees to Jesus Christ. Why? Because the power of conviction is at work. I pray by the grace of God that those you, have pr you are praying for, for, the three, they will feel the sense of conviction until Jesus Christ works through their lives and they come to know him as Lord and Savior. Number four and the last area of prayer, the last area of prayer is pray for open doors. Pray for open doors. Bind the strong man. Recognize and destroy the strongholds. Number three, pray for the conviction of the Holy Spirit because it's only the Holy Spirit who moves people to salvation, who moves people to conviction. And number four, open, pray for open doors, open doors. Acts chapter number 14, verse number 17 has got this rendering. This is what it says. Acts chapter 14, verse 17 says, And when they arrived and gathered the church together, they declared all that God had done with them and how he had opened a door opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. Open the door of faith to the Gentiles. This is a symbolism. To have a door opened, this is a phrase that is used in missions. All over, in, you see in the book of Acts, in the episodes, this phrase, open door, is where we have an opportunity to share the gospel. That the environment or a person has become open. And there's an opportunity that the gospel can be preached, can be shared to that person. Well, when you talk about the key, you see the key in chapter number 16 of Matthew and uh, the, uh, the key in the book of uh, Revelation. The key represents authority, represents authority over activities or over an environment. While the door, opening of the door, represents opportunities to enter through, opportunities to preach the gospel. So I want us to be praying for the open door. As you pray for those three, and as you pray for the city, you pray for open doors. You are saying, Lord, open us to opportunities to share the gospel. Open me, open my eyes to opportunity to share the gospel. So open doors may be a form of reception. 
given to a preacher. So, for example, Pastor uh, Evangelist uh, Martha would say, oh, there was an open door. So, she enters into a place and there's such a reception, starting either from uh, 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 community leaders, uh, starting from church leaders that they are giving her, you know, support. There's a reception. There's a high level of reception. It's an open door. It's so a form of respect, reception given to the preacher. It could be a relational connection, a relational connection that gives you an opportunity to preach. It could be a cultural understanding that predisposes somebody to receive and listen to the gospel. It could be a cultural thing. It could be something that is within that environment that opens the people to receive the gospel. So an open door may be anything within the environment that makes uh, the people be predisposed to give the gospel a chance. Open doors. So Paul says there was an open door to preach the gospel. God had opened the door to preach the gospel. There was favor for the gospel to go wide. God had opened the door. I'd want also to submit to you, brothers and sisters, that needs, human needs, such as sicknesses, disasters, catastrophes, uh, when people are at the T-junctions of their lives, when people are in the valleys of their lives, those are triggers of open doors. I'll repeat. Needs, human needs, human challenges, sicknesses, disasters. So when you have those three, when you have those three, you are praying for them. There may be times when God gives you uh, a clue that there's an open door because people, they always open up their lives when they are in need. It has been said, if, 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 you have, if you've uh, uh, experienced therapy from um, a psychologist, a counselor, uh, for those who have been uh, uh, affected by addiction to uh, substance abuse, drug abuse, it has been said they are never ready to, re to receive help until their bottom breaks. If they haven't reached a crisis, they are not ready to get help. If they have the money, if everything is going well, if everything is, they are still there, uh, they are not ready to receive until the bottom breaks, until a crisis. But others, even when they crisis, they don't want to. But crisis needs are triggers of open doors. So you as a believer, be aware, these triggers will be there. People are more open when they are challenged with needs. They're more open to get help. They're more open to receive. Uh, support and support they can receive is spiritual support. So the needs are triggers of open doors. Colossians chapter number four, verse two, it says, Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ. So you pray for open doors. Paul says, pray so that we have open doors. So as you pray for these people, pray that there will be an open door. Pray for the city that there's open door. And as we pray, it is the salvation of the Lord that is open for the city. And you remember, when we pray, it is, does not necessarily mean it is the only church that harvest. This city is so big that not one church is got the capacity to win it for Jesus. I'll repeat. This city has got more people. Not one denomination has the capacity to reach it for Jesus. We need all kinds of churches. We need all kinds of networks. We need all kinds of collaborations to win this seat to the Lord. But what we can do at the foundational level is to pray for the city. Is to bring it. And as we bring it to the Lord, they will be harvesters. Because one of the prayers we pray is for the Lord to send harvesters. 
He says, lift up your eyes and see the harvest is plentiful. Therefore, go pray to the Lord of the harvest. To do what? To send more laborers. So that's part of the prayer for the city. Lord, send laborers. Lord, increase laborers. Lord, increase laborers. Lord, increase laborers in the city. Lord, increase people that are focused, that are intentional for the, you know, for the, for the deliverance of this city in the name of Jesus. Increase laborers. Increase people that are focused. Increase people that are prayerful. Increase people that are, have got perception for the city. Increase laborers. That is a prayer for the city. Now, it is important for us to understand that open doors does not mean there are no adversaries. Amen? Open doors does not mean there are no adversaries. Here is what the scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. For a wide door for effective work has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 16, very interesting, verse 9. He says there is a wide door. There is capacity to enter. There is opportunities to preach. But man, ooh, there are adversaries. There are people blocking it. There are evil spirits blocking. But people are receptive. But at every turn you go, there are adversaries. It's almost like, you know, you are praying for a, church, for a nation, for a church that is in a persecuted uh, nation. People are willing to receive the gospel. But, you know, authorities in that land, they are breaking, blocking all the people that are supposed to preach. We are praying for the Republican uh, uh, country of uh, China. And that's what it is. You cannot preach publicly. You have to go preach in specific churches that are recognized by the government. They are called, you know, uh, churches that are laid by the government. There, there are three denominations only. And those denominations that are, they have a lot of intelligence in there. You can't, you can't, you can't preach freely. Like the way I'm preaching right now, you can't. You know, they may need your script before you start preaching. And because there's persecution. There's persecution. But Paul says, the door is open, but the adversaries. So it does not mean that when the prayer, when the door is open, that there will be no adversaries. Even in this city, even in this city, the door is open for the preaching of the gospel. But in the spirit, there are adversaries. There is always confusion in the spirit. There is always blockages in the spirit. We need to learn to bombard, you know, the heavenly realms so that the spiritual entities over this city breaks so that many, the spoils of this city should be given unto the Lord. The kingdom, we should have us for the kingdom. That's what it is. I want you to stand if you can. I want you to stand if you can. Press him, please, quickly if you can come. I want us to do two things at the altar. Two things. I want us just to pray. We'll spend a few minutes to pray. We are, we are not practicing. We are not racing. We are praying. Amen? We are going to pray. Just a few minutes we are going to pray. And I would want you to pray for your three, and I want you to pray for your city. I want you to pray for us. I want to pray, you know, in the spirit realm, breaking the hold of the devil, the, 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 the territorial spirits. I want you to pray against us. I want you to pray against strongholds over this city. Things that makes the city go backwards. Things that hold the city not to move forward. Things to, for the city to progress. Break them in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray that people will be saved and they will be radically saved. Do you know? Do you know 80% of Malawans are Christians, but the majority are nominal Christians. Therefore, sin continues to, uh, uh, to pervert, uh, to permeate throughout, sometimes in high, in high levels, in, in the government, in the academia, in the private, everywhere. Why? Because even if people are called by the name Christ or Christian, but they are not radically transformed inside of them. They do not follow the level of integrity. They do not. Why? Because there are other strongholds that keep on holding this city. Would we pray against those strongholds? 
in the name of Jesus. And this is what I want you to do. I want, uh, as the Lord leads, I want you just to pray in the spirit. As the Lord leads, I want you to pray in the spirit and design the spiritual word. Design uh, the revelation from God. Just open up. Please, just for a little bit, ignore your neighbor, okay? Ignore your neighbor. If you want, if you are very sensitive over your neighbor, close your eyes. It will be okay. Because you will not see them. Just close your eyes. You will not see them. Don't be, don't be aware of your neighbor. I want us just to pray. Pray for your three. Pray for the city. Would you do that? Let's spend a few moments. Just lift up your hands if you can. If you want, if you want to pass around like I do, you are welcome. I want us to spend a few moments, few minutes. We pray, oh God, for the three. My three, oh God. My three, I present them before you. I pray, oh God, for righteousness, oh God, to be in their lives in the name of Jesus. I pray for the conviction of the Holy Ghost. I pray, oh God, that you say is the wrongness of their lives. They will say, oh God, and the sin awareness in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, oh God, by the grace of God, binding the strong man, binding the strong man, binding the strong man, in Jesus' name. Lakato, shekate, bakate, rebakapa, Breaking every yoke of the enemy. 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 Over the strongholds. Over the struggles. In the name of Jesus. Akayate. Akayate. Okato Karababa. Territorial spirits over this city. Territorial spirits over this city. Princess over this city. We come against them. We come against them. We rebuke our God and we speak our God against them. You evil spirits. We command you. We command you out. We command you now and void. We command you you have no power. In the name of Jesus Christ, you princess over this nation. You princess over this nation. You princess over this city. You principalities. You demonic powers. You wicked spirits. I come against you. I resist you. I resist you. As Archangel said, we resist you in the name of Jesus. We rebuke you in Jesus' name. We command you out in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for the three. I pray for the three. They shall be wooed. They shall be drawn by your spirit, by your power in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for conviction. We pray for the power of the Holy Ghost. Conviction in boardrooms. Conviction in the marketplaces. Conviction in the political grounds. Conviction, of oh God, in the civil service. Conviction in academia. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, fall afresh. Fall afresh. Fall afresh over this city. Bagato. Bagate Kaya. Bagate Keria. Father, we pray for open doors. 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 Open doors to preach the word. Open doors to speak your word. We pray for open Open doors in the name of Jesus. We come against every adversary. It doesn't matter how many adversaries. May we see the open doors. May we recognize the open doors. May we walk in the open doors. In the name of Jesus. Akato, Akate, Kayaka, Rebote, Kayaba, Bajeka Terebo, Jeka Terebo, Jeka Jeka Terebo, Jeka Terebo, Jeka Terebo. Father, open doors for every three. 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 We bring them, oh God, at your feet. Oh God, the convicting power of grace. The convicting power of the Holy Ghost. We thank you, oh God, because you are well able to do it. In Jesus' name, we thank you, oh God. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the open doors. 
Thank you, Lord, for the open doors. Thank you, Lord God, for broad-based doors. Thank you, Lord God. Open our eyes. Open our eyes to see the open doors. Give us discernment. Give us discernment to see open doors. Oh, Father, give us a revelation to see open doors. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Would you just lift up your hands? Let's worship together. Let's give our hearts to him. Let's say, yes, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I give myself away so you can use me. I give yes to your Lord. I give myself away so you, so you. close and every head bow down there could be an opportunity for you to all, to enter in that open door that you've never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior you've never encountered him listen by radio watching by television live streaming Facebook or YouTube you've never given your life to Jesus I would want to give you an opportunity it's so simple you repeat this prayer after me but make it your prayer because we receive him by prayer so it is your prayer. I'm just helping you. Would you say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. Thank you for the word. I come to realize that without you, I am blind. I'm walking in darkness. And I'm bound in sin. Today I ask for forgiveness. I pray, forgive me. And according to your word, it says, if I confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I will be saved. Today, I confess you. You are Lord. Be my Lord. Today, I believe in my heart that you were raised from the dead with the same power Raise my dead spirit. In your name, Christ, I pray. Now, if you've prayed that prayer for the first time over the airwaves, radio, television, I would want to pray for you all in this auditorium. Father, in the name of Jesus, for everyone who has given their life to Christ, to you, the ones that have prayed this prayer, I pray, oh God, may you transform them according to your word. 
by your spirit may you resurrect their spirits in the name of Jesus transform them break the yoke of sin over their lives remove the guilt of sin Father, I pray for those that are under addiction. I pray break their addictions in the name of Jesus. Release them, O oh God, into your freedom. Release them into your newness of life. We thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. As every saint say, amen. Come on, let's appreciate him. Thank you, may take your seats. One more time, let's give a Lord a clap of ring. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Loisha, for the powerful ministry of the word and also leading us in prayer. Uh, this time, I'd like to allow you, together with Pastor Christine, to lead the state president and the first lady out of this auditorium. Praise the Lord. We'll go quickly through our announcements. We have a night of prayer coming up on the 19th of April. That will be from uh, 8 p.m. to 12 midnight. So please mark your calendars. 19th of April, 2024, we have a night of prayer. Again, on the 20th of April, there will be a Women's uh, World Day of Prayer right here. So that's the reason we are ending at midnight for the night of prayer. So that women can come in the morning uh, for this uh, Women's World Day of Prayer. It's being hosted by ICA together with Capitol Hill Zone. We want to announce to the church that one of our members, uh, Ayan Jankosi, has lost a father in the barriers today. Uh, right now, they should be going to, to church for, for, for prayers. So please, let's support her. And together with her husband, uh, Richard, and also the entire family, let's be with them. If you're able to, let's go and be with them. Membership and baptism is has started today. So if you want to be baptized in water, you haven't been in that class, please want to welcome you. If you haven't been in the membership class as well, we'd like to invite you to come and register with our elder Briar right over there. We want to welcome you if this is your first Sunday at ICA. Anyone? Anyone who's here for the first time, let's see the hands. Yes, you are welcome to church. Yes, so many hands. Welcome, welcome. At the back, welcome. Those that are close to our visitors, can you give them a fist bump and tell them you're very welcome to the International Christian Assembly. And you have a small responsibility afterwards. We want you to take them and usher them into the visitor reception area. So those of you that did not even raise hands, we also want to talk to you, we want to know more about you so that you can also know about us. So please, after this service, we'd like to ask you again, those that are close to them, bring them to the visitor reception area and there you meet Elder Briar as well. Let's bow our heads as we close the service. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. Thank you for your word that has been delivered so powerfully. Thank you, Lord, for the people that we have targeted and we are praying for so that they can come to the knowledge of salvation and accept you as Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father, we pray for everyone that came to church this morning. The Lord, as we go home, be with us, guide us, protect us. May our week be fruitful. May it be well with us in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for this wonderful fellowship of brothers and sisters in this place. And I thank you for the wonderful, our wonderful fellowship with you, our God and our King. This afternoon, Lord, as we go, may your name be glorified. We thank you and we honor you. In the blessed name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, let's greet one another as we go. Somebody you've never greeted, somebody you don't know, introduce yourself and say, we are blessed to have you today.